I think Frank Dukes added something with Ledich. Like, for whatever reason, when Frank was involved, like, Frank whether Dukes. Sheldon wants to admit it or not, he made his best films, and I don't think that was a coincidence. So, with that said, you know, I, I've talked to Sheldon, of course, and he gives Frank credit for Bloodsport. He gives yeah. him credit for Lionheart. Uh, yeah. Not so much on Double Impact and really not so much on Only the Strong. It was pretty much a waste of time. Now, in your experience, because you... You co-wrote the film with Sheldon and you were on set the whole time. Like, uh, what was your experience with Frank on Only the Strong, if you don't mind sharing? Hey guys, this is part two of my interview with Louis Esteban, co-writer of Only the Strong. He's much more than co-writer, though. He was on set the whole time, helped fight choreography, was even in the movie. So anyway, uh, we're going to go really in-depth, talk about Frank Dukes' involvement in the film, talk about why Capoeira mm -hmm. was even the martial art they wanted to use for the film, all that more super in-depth. Make sure to check out part one of that interview where we get their origin of how the story even came about, uh, which is loosely based on a true story. But anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, and enjoy this second part of the interview. I know. This is important to, to, to uh, your subscribers. And here's the thing. I have no axe to grind with Frank Dukes at all. In fact, I rarely think about Frank Dukes because he, he's... You haven't seen him basically since Only the Strong. Since Only the Strong. And in Only the Strong, I remember only speaking with him, mm -hmm. let alone working with him, one time. And he was oh, really? showing you a picture about some alligator that he was wrestling. Oh, that's the one Sheldon was mentioning. One day we're wondering where it's Frank. Well, let's just go on with what we're doing. He comes, he shows up. He says, hey, guess what, guys? I was wrestling alligators today. Okay. Now I'm being very, very cautious about the words that I use. And here's why. I know that there's a lot of controversy about how much of Bloodsport was really based on Frank Dukes, how much wasn't, um, is Frank Dukes a ninja, is he not? You know, is he a con artist, is he not? And I'm gonna get into this because I, I knew that it was going to be brought up, I knew. It, it has to, it brings such a big part of this channel to. in that world. And, with you guys. <laughs> and I'm interested in, in this particular conversation only in so far as it benefits other people, specifically your audience, mm -hmm. um, because I try, I try, I don't always succeed. I try to make sure that anything that I do that's public is going to have some benefit for those who are listening or watching. Oh, sure. Uh, otherwise, I'm wasting your time and I'm wasting the time if anybody's going to watch this particular interview. No one knows who I am. Right? I've been <laughs> they, in the industry all this. this time. <laughs> no one knows who I am. Uh, You've been and, behind the and, scenes this whole time. <laughs> yeah, uh, literally. Yeah, I, I've worked uh, on many, many wonderful films. Um, but this isn't about my... Resume, this is about answering your question about Frank Dukes. I, I spoke with Frank Dukes once when we were in Miami. I didn't know anything about him. Like I said, I hadn't been a fan of blood sport. Um, I, I wasn't into the martial arts the way other people are. For me, the martial arts was, was an aspect of Japanese or Chinese history. And these are no different than the Knights of the Round Table. You know, it's like these are, these are combat arts. Uh, I was very, very aware of ninjutsu and, and what ninjas and meant to feudal Japan, especially. So my God, it's such a difficult topic because I really, I don't want to offend anybody that has chosen to really, really be in the Frank Dukes team, right? Uh, or his students or his friends. It actually hurts me. It, 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 it's sad that there's this animosity that comes out every once in a while between Sheldon and Frank Dukes. It is. And I'll tell you why, Lewis, yeah, because every is. time I talk to Frank, he literally says, I loved Sheldon. Yeah. Like I could, yeah. I could tell that relationship yeah. and friendship was so meaningful for him yeah. and to him. Yeah. yeah. And I really feel bad about that. But yeah, I, I really do. I would, I would love to, to, to have this thing just become much more positive for the benefit of everybody, for those who, who are students of Frank Dukes, for those who were inspired by Frank Dukes, mm -hmm. and those who are fans of Sheldon's movies. Oh, right. I, I really would like that. There are some areas that, that are just really tricky. 
and most of them deal specifically with the military, your, you know, your record in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. um, because the Marine Corps is where I draw the line about whether you did or did not do certain things. So that's a tricky one. But you can tell this is like a loaded, loaded, <laughs> loaded question. Uh, I really want to do right by all of you guys. Um, Frank Dukes, I met once on the set of Only the Strong. I was involved in, in a lot, not only as the writer, because I got brought in, I was treated very well on that film. Writers are normally not invited to sure. the set. Because they're going to change right. and butcher your script. It's like, hey, yeah, get yeah. them out of here. <laughs> yeah, but in this case, you know, uh, Sheldon, I was treated very well. I was even able to fly my mom, my daughter, oh, wow. my, my girlfriend at the time, even had a, a role in the film. Uh, she was a news reporter in the oh, film. Okay. She was reporting on Lincoln High. Oh, cool. Um, and... And it was great. I was able to share it with my family. That meant a lot to me. Yeah, sure. The reason I can't say much about Frank Dukes is because this is not a slight on him, but I was involved in the basketball court scene. I was the guy, the, the knucklehead that threw the basketball at Mark. Okay. That was know, and, and launched that basketball court scene fight. Because I was training a lot, I was able to do some of these action things. That was Sheldon who put me in, into that particular character, Brazilian thug number two. I didn't even have a name, you know, it didn't matter. Um, I was in a machete fight scene, which was sort of a, um, a tribal uh, truce that Silverio's character and the Jamaican character um, engaged in. It was a very unusual scene because it was about these two gangs deciding to get together in order to take down this, this teacher, Mark Picasso's character, Louis Stevens. There was no Frank Dukes on set. Oh, there so was he no was Frank supposed Dukes. to choreograph that. That's all choreography, right. Um, and when we were rehearsing that, by the way, again, I, I wasn't originally an actor in the film. It was, it was a necessity. Some of the people that were supposed to do that character with the machetes and throw the basketball the more they didn't know what they were doing and i was trying to explain to them about rhythm and and because you see frank dukes was not there okay but he I was not recall to. one single rehearsal sequence uh rehearsal session where frank dukes was there saying okay now you do this now you do that now you do the other thing not one. And I was involved in quite a few martial arts action sequences in the film. The basketball court sequence, where I was quite active in that. Um, and if Frank was there, I didn't interact with him. Uh, the rehearsal sessions, I didn't see Frank. Most of the time he wasn't even around. We'd, we'd be looking for him. Uh, I was also involved in the final grand finale fight scene. You know, oh, okay. The final confrontation between Silvedio and Lewis characters. Um, I, I don't ever recall seeing Frank. Um, it seemed to me like he was there for one time and then he was requested to no longer be involved with the production for mm -hmm. reasons that I'd rather really not get into because I wasn't a part of the conversation. Um, I wasn't part of the decision making, whether he was going to remain on the film or not. These things happen even under the best of circumstances. I've been involved on major, major motion pictures like Training Day and Alpha Dog and major television shows like Crossing Jordan. And myself, once I started rising through the ranks and started, you know, uh, uh, ADing, assistant directing and being in charge of, you know, something as recent as a big, giant, epic period film that I was involved in as the assistant director, people had to be replaced mm -hmm. because there's so much money at stake and there's only but so much time to get that film completed that if there's ever a problem with, with people not working and playing well with others or, or, or not delivering on, on what needs to be delivered, you really don't have a lot of time oh, know, sure. to, yeah. to work it out. You, you, you can do that to some extent during the development phase, during the pre-production phase, early pre-production phase of, of a movie. But once you're there, every single day, there's like anywhere from tens to hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars that are going. Oh, sure. Fast. Each day is expensive. Every day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's, that's the, the agony and the ecstasy of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of the scale and scope, once your cameras are rolling and you have people on that set, you have to make decisions. So Sheldon, having been experienced enough 
you know, with film production uh, on studio pictures. He knew it's like whatever happened between him and Frank, whatever Frank was supposed to deliver, whatever he was not supposed to deliver, um, it wasn't happening, you know, at the level that it needed to. And so a decision was made. I ended up politely firing him from Only the Strong. One time we're getting ready to shoot. This is a, in, in the evening. Uh, everything's all ready to go. Um, and then the, the assistant director says, there's somebody wandering around on the set. It's, he's in the shot. Uh, who is that? And we take a close look and we realize it's Frank. <laughs> and we start yelling, Frank, you're in the shot. Get off. The, he, he was on his cell phone, just, just wandering around, just not being helpful at all. Basically, he could have learned a lot by just paying attention to what we were doing. You're blowing it, Frank. That's all that I can really comment on with Frank because uh, it would have been great to get to know him a little bit more. Oh, sure. um, I just really, that's why this is such an uncomfortable topic for me because number one, I'm not really into, like Frank has his own business, he has his own path through life. He has Duke's Ryu, he has his students who love him and care for him very, very much. And so uh, it's not really my position to, to to rain on anybody's parade about that sort of thing. You know, it's like the world of martial arts, there's a reason why I didn't pursue it as a martial artist beyond what I needed to, which is I, I learned a few things really, really well, really well. Um, and I think that's the way it's always been throughout the history of martial arts, right? If you're uh, in the cavalry, there's only certain things you really need to know in order to fight, right? Uh, just like we were talking about self-defense. You don't really need to know 25 kicks. You just need to know a few things really well because oh, everything yeah. comes down to just a few moments. MMA fights and UFC fights prove that time and time again. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm pretty sure that all of these fighters have extensive backgrounds in different martial arts, Taekwondo, Hapkido, you know, all of these things, which I did as well. I studied a lot of them. Frank Dukes had a fan base, right? And he had time in with Sheldon on Bloodsport. Lionheart. So, of course, Sheldon wanted to work with people that he'd worked with before. Sure. Sheldon didn't bring Frank Dukes. And I think maybe this was the wrong movie for Frank Dukes, too, because the movie, by way of martial arts, was really focused on capoeira, which is something that Frank hadn't studied. I hadn't studied it until I had to, right? Because originally, yeah. Real quick, see. Lewis, whose yeah. decision was it to make it capoeira? Like, that was a conversation that uh, he, he is no longer with us, unfortunately. He passed away not too long ago. Sammy Hadid's company. Uh, Sammy was the executive, uh, was the producer and financier of the movie, uh, co financier with 20th Century Fox. He's French, okay. Moroccan, French. Uh, and Capoeira was already very well known to Europeans. Oh, to Europeans. Definitely not in America. Not in America. To yeah, we were actually the first film to really focus on capoeira there was another there were other films that you you've seen it here and there funny yeah, enough there was yeah. like a capoeira yeah. guy at the beginning yeah. of blood sport and then we yeah. had a couple guys in kickboxer three right. but to focus on it and to really get the audience's attention i mean i was blown away i've never seen this stuff you know okay. i mean now you got guys tricking and doing flips yeah, and all yeah. this stuff with their kicks on instagram yeah. and all that but like in the 90s as i was blown away i was like oh he's doing backflips and cartwheels and, and doing right. kicks it's like that's so cool yeah. you know yeah and and that was a brilliant decision um because it it was so cinematic and yeah, and even the choice of capoeira was not this is the most lethal combat system ever invented you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> no it was a beautiful art form Mm -hmm. The character, the Lewis Stevens character, found his joy in the military. And we don't even really know what sort of covert operations his character was involved in. These are things to explore in a sequel. Which we'll talk seeding about a little bit that. later. I'm seeding. Potential. That. Yeah. Put the seed out uh, intentionally. There. <laughs> um, so, but the Lewis Stevens character, like anybody who's served in the Marine Corps, the Army, Navy, Air Force, any, any military branch who, who's actually been in the field, has seen things. And sometimes you see things that stay with you and they're not good. Whether you've seen combat or not, if you've been out on the field, you're exposed to other cultures, you're exposed to, to uh, your own soul. Like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Uh, you have to remember that once you, you're, especially infantry divisions or, or infantry service divisions uh, within the military, 
uh, I can get into that should anybody be, be aware of that. This deals with the crux of the argument, I think, or, or the, the lack of peace between Sheldon and Frank Dukes. I don't think Sheldon, I'll get, let me get into that. I don't think Sheldon really cares one way or the other whether Frank Dukes is a ninja or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think that's really the issue. I think Sheldon's biggest, biggest thing is as a Marine, hearing someone else make the claims that Mr. Dukes has made. Okay. That's the crux of it. Not whether Mr. Dukes has one black belt, 10 black belts, 20. When I grew up in New York City, it seemed like every street corner had a grandmaster. So <laughs> I, like everybody was the master of something. And uh, it, it, it's a three ring circus, I think I mentioned to you on a phone conversation. Yeah. That's what the martial arts world seemed to have been. Um, unfortunately, and not just here in the US, but elsewhere in mm -hmm. the world. Um, before the, the, you know, the ubiquitous, you know, smartphone where you can actually take pictures of people getting their butts kicked by somebody else, yeah. whether they are or are not a master. Back in the day, there, there were no cell phones, so everybody could make a claim to something. <laughs> Catches bullets with his teeth. Oh, sure. And there's so much ego involved. I mean, we're talking there's about so guys much. being tough and like yeah. beating people up. It's like, you know, it's just in our DNA. If you're a guy, oh, if you're tough and you can beat people up, you're a badass. And everybody wants to be a badass, you know? The Shogun is back on the scene and the Shogun is the master. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a moment to, to, and this is also what we explored in Only the Strong. Um, guys like Silvedio's character, their whole world revolves around power and, and the perception of power. That's how you maintain control of your neighborhood. That's how you maintain control of your drug trade. That's it. To this day, this is all about power. Who, you know, you don't talk your way through certain things in life. You, you, you know, the mob doesn't work on truces. The mob works <laughs> on, right? The, the Italian mob or the Yakuza or triads, you name it. Any mob in the world or any organized crime in the world deals with fear and power and that sort of thing sure. so we were exploring that it's a very difficult thing um no one is born saying i'm going to be a drug dealer or i'm going to be a pimp <laughs> or i'm you know, these things life has a way of dishing these things out and how you cope and deal with that is a, is a, a result of your environment in some places you really don't have many choices uh, in some parts of the world prostitution is a way of life it's like this is all they have. And yeah, I mean, that's very unfortunate. This is it. This is like the only way uh, that these kids are going to help provide for their families. It's mm -hmm. not something they're born going, you know, it's, it's not a very pleasant thing. Um, the trafficking trade, the drug trade, uh, all of these things. So when Mr. Dukes makes certain claims, um, and then Sheldon responds to that. I think what Sheldon is responding to is things that are near and dear to him. Mm -hmm. you know, the Marine Corps being one of those, right? The military, his time in the Marine Corps is very real. When a Marine hears someone else making claims, that's why I think this book, Stolen Ballot, came out. Oh, sure. Maybe whether or not. That book is not a muckraking, you know, witch hunting endeavor. That book is about people who who saw their friends and, and family die, you know, serving their country. Mm -hmm. And while not every Marine is, is re really there to serve country, some people are there in the army or whatever, in order to, to help with buying a house later, you know, they, they don't know what they want to do with their lives. So they join the military, you know, any number of things. Oh yeah, sure. Reasons. But there are people who serve in the military because they are patriots. Yeah, they're hardcore about that, sure. Right? Um, and to them, this is an important part of, of life. This is this, you know, it's like, don't lie about certain things that other people have died and been given awards of that. I think that's really at the crux of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's something that should be played out publicly. I don't think it should be something um, to lie about. There's no reason really to lie about these sorts of things. Uh, so, wow, very long-winded way of, of trying <laughs> to say, I don't know what Mr. Dukes is or is not. I do know Sheldon because I've worked with Sheldon quite a bit. Uh, we've recently, 
thank God I'm in a position where I was able to actually buy a script that Sheldon wrote. It has nothing to do with martial arts. Uh, it's a family movie, Dogs. You know, um, it was originally based in Moscow, but now there's a war. So yeah, I don't think you're based in a movie to, out there anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've changed the setting to a Central European country. Okay. Um, but it's just a, it's a family film about dogs, you know, and Sheldon uh, and another friend of ours, mutual friend Boaz, who did Remember the Titans. He was the director of that, amongst other things. He directed a movie called Max, dog film. Sure. That's, that's, so, a, that's a big hit. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, which I'm very happy for, because a lot of people were, were questioning whether Sheldon could do anything other than a Van Damme movie. Like, <laughs> yes, he can. Sure. Yes, he can. Um, that's almost like saying, can Van Damme act? Yeah, he can actually act. Uh, give, him, give, him, give him an opportunity. And I think maybe he's going in that direction now, because it's like, sure, why not? He's, he's accomplished so much in his life. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, why not? Pursue and I, and I heard he might only do one more martial arts film anyway and go out with a bang. But see, I don't think he's like done acting. So it's like that, that'll that be his final martial arts film. And he's getting older anyway. Yeah. And he's become, you know, the irony is that he's become a much better actor in the straight to video era. The problem is the movies aren't as good. But his acting, his, his yeah. you know, he could just yeah. rely on his pure charisma like earlier in the films. And he's fun yeah. to watch. Well, you could just tell as as like a dramatic actor, he's so much better. The movies just aren't as good, unfortunately. You know, something if, if you really want to get something of an insight into some of his inspirations, uh, you, you can really break down his films. This one's going to sound really weird. But if you remember the beginning of The Quest, right, I think he if you when look he's like that the old again, guy, right? Yeah. Um, even as early as that, you, you could see that he was really into acting. Sure. Martial arts was just, you know, it was a natural extension of, or a, nat, or a requirement. And I'm not saying he doesn't love martial arts. Of course he does, mm -hmm. right? Of course he does. But, but that wasn't his primary thing. He was really into, like, my artists, like Marcel Marceau. He was really into, you know, French New Wave filmmakers. He was really into um, the arts, basically, just, just the arts in general, and, and not necessarily martial arts. I think that's what made him such a successful person is that he was really driven by a life journey that didn't end with martial arts. So I am very much looking forward to seeing JC, uh, you know, focus on, on, a, on the next phase of his life, sure. which incorporates not even just movies, but it incorporates things like ecology. It incorporates, um, you know, he's, he's very much a dog lover himself. You know, he's, Oh he's, yeah. Like I heard he just dog adopts dogs yeah. all around the world yeah. when, when he's like making films and he's got this yeah. big dog shelters everywhere. Yeah. And how can you not love that part of the guy? You know? yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge animal lover, animal rights activist, et cetera. So it's like, that's, that's my kind of guy. <laughs> now he's really, he, he, he is into so many things and, and I really wish him well. He, he's, He's accomplished a lot, you know. Uh, he's got great kids. Uh, I know Chris because he's my daughter's, close to my daughter's age, and they were they grew up together for a period of time for a portion oh, of their cool. lives when she was, you know, when I when she was living with me in Los Angeles. So they all that was our extended family, mm -hmm. right? This is why I can speak for a very long time about Sheldon, but I can't really say much about Frank Dukes. There are some things that are, that are disturbing to me. But honestly, whenever Sheldon brings up this topic, I, I feel bad. Like, you know, Sheldon, you have so much to accomplish still in, in, in your very, very uh, accomplished life. Like Sheldon is one of these few people that has made, that has taken care of his family while being a filmmaker. That's rare. That's oh, sure. very, very rare. Um, he's... He's interested in so many different topics. He's got so many wonderful ideas. He's always writing something. He's always doing things. And then I, not that it's beneath him, because I do understand where his primary objectives, uh, his primary objections to, to Frank Dukes' claims, some of Frank Dukes' claims. And again, like I stated before, a lot of that has to do with the military mm -hmm. uh, background, not so much the ninja stuff. You know, yeah, uh, I mean, there's no reason why Sheldon would take offense to the martial arts stuff. I mean, he's not even yeah. a martial artist himself. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't yeah. see why. Like he the Kumite there. stuff. You can't prove it. You, you just can't prove it. <laughs> no one was there. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm looking for the smoking gun. I'm looking for that video. 
by the way. Yeah. Like, I'll, you know, I'll, I've uh, seen, we'll, we'll see I've if we seen, find it. <laughs> uh, I've seen some of the stuff that you, you know, um, that you've put out where there was some Kumite footage. Supposedly. Yeah. And, and... <laughs> questionable. <laughs> we'll find the smoking gun someday, man. Yeah. It's be and, out there, but... and here's the big thing why is it that important why is it that important at all I mean, like god bless frank dukes he's got his school he's got his students um he knows enough about combat to to oh sure teach yeah. something worthwhile to others he knows uh, I, I you know i remember when we did have a few conversations he is aware obviously of camera angles he's aware of filmmaking to some extent and that is always exciting to me i enjoy those conversations because i love filmmaking Period. I love filmmaking. Uh, I love different cultures. I love learning about different cultures. Whenever the ninja thing or the kumite thing comes up, the reason that I'm skeptical about that is because you cannot prove it. It cannot be proven. So for me, it's like, why waste time over something that it, it's, it's like saying, you know, God made the world in six days. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, you're not going to prove it. I mean, who cares? Like, which God, here, you know, living in the world, that's the important thing. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's just, I don't even want to open up that kind of words. I, I don't want to offend uh, people who actually do believe it. I'll, I'll, I have to say, uh, there are some folks that, that really do believe that because that's what they were taught. Sure. You know, <laughs> this whole thing reminds me of that world. You know, people are taught something like when you die, you're going to immediately go to heaven and you're going to have 70 some odd ladies. You know that. Yeah, that's an interesting yeah. one. You, you know, yeah. the interesting thing with Duke. So it's like you almost have to ask how you even define truth or belief, yeah. because if, if you believe in something that then it's yeah. true, yeah. whether there's proof or not, like you talked about religion, for example. So yeah. with Frank, uh, the Kumite stuff, whether we ever find the real footage or not, it's true for some people because they believe it and sure. other people it, it let's say hypothetically it is true but the people that don't believe it because they don't believe it it's not true so it's right. a very interesting philosophical yeah way to think about things but but enough about frank <laughs> enough about frank let's get wow. um <laughs> let's let's go back to only yeah. the strong and van dam actually was there any discussion to have van dam being only the strong 